Special thanks to Patreon supporter Derek Frost Rusberg for making this video possible. Hello ladies and gentlemen, scared to here bringing you another Minecraft Modern Warfare vehicle tutorial. In this tutorial we'll be going ahead and building the 2S25 Sprut SD. The 2S25 Sprut SD is a self-propelled tank destroyer of the light tank development and manufactured by uh, Volograd Tractor Plant to meet the requirements of the VDV. In mid-2001, the Volo Volograd Tractor Plant revealed that the development of the 2 S25 had lasted several years. The Sprut uh, SD is designed to defeat tanks, hard skin material, and enemy manpower by airborne and amphibious landing forces, as well as by specifically designated units of ground forces. Its main armament, the 2A75, is capable of firing APF SDS, HE frag, heat, and ATGM ammunition. This allows the 2S25 firepower to be as powerful as the main battle tank and as maneuverable as the amphibious uh, airborne infantry combat vehicles. The Sprut SD can be used by units of ground forces and naval infantry as a light amphibious tank. As of 2011, the only operations of the 2S25 are the Russian airborne troops, with 24 of these vehicles in service. The Republic of Korea and the Indian military have expressed interest in acquiring the Sprut SD. So overall, pretty interesting um, vehicle here and um yeah just a very interesting vehicle um i think it is actually based off of the um bmd uh frame so kind of interesting in that sense and basically it's designed to kind of be that more of a uh, vehicle combatant type vehicle rather than a infantry carrier or support vehicle like the um standard bmd is so overall pretty interesting vehicle and quite a capable little one for what it's uh intended to kind of serve um, but before we go ahead and jump in and take a look at this build, I do want to go ahead and give a special links to Patreon supporter Derek Frost Westbrook for making this tutorial possible. If you guys are interested in supporting the channel more you already do, feel free to check out my Patreon page. Link is always in my video description so where you can go and play this small amount to the channel every month. And in doing so, earn a vehicle request of your choosing. It really helps support the work I do on my channel. It's really greatly appreciated. So again, definitely feel free to check that out. Again, link is always in my video descriptions. With that though, let's go ahead and dive in here and take a look at the... 2S25 Sprut SD. So going ahead and getting started with, we have the main gun here, which is um, a 125mm smoothbore gun. It does also have um, a secondary machine gun, which just with the way that the tank is structured, we weren't able to really squeeze it in here too much, but there would be a coaxial machine gun to the side here of the gun. One thing to take note is that the gun would be centered on the um, proper build, but just due to the even number width we had to do for the vehicle chassis we had to do an off-center gun which obviously is not ideal for um this build but it kind of is the compromise we had to do for it so it works but at the same time it's like not perfect so i just want to throw that out there as a you know just a little heads up on that one uh but we have the turret itself um pretty straightforward pretty simple kind of a nice modern um you know turret for the most part smoker dispensers all that fun stuff and that's really that then we come down to the tracks pretty again straightforward um it is the bm bmp uh hole, or sorry the bmd hole so it is very um kind of boxy and just kind of squared off and get the road wheels in the back here of the vehicle and all that stuff it's pretty straightforward so overall pretty cool build um again we'll make an awesome addition for any kind of naval units and kind of being uh, i guess put together with our bmps and bmds that we've done tutorials on um it'll definitely fit in um with those vehicles and kind of a convoy or something of that sort but anyways though without further ado let's go ahead and move into the tutorial by beginning with our first layer layer number one so moving into our first layer we have layer one for layer one to get started with here we want to go ahead and place down another brick upside down stair like so going back from this we're going to go ahead and then place down a black shulker box so on its side like so we then want to place down two polished black stone stairs then another black shulker box on its side like so again two polished black stone stairs and air black shulker box two polished black stone stairs back to back and another black shulker box like so so basically right here you should have four black shulker boxes and two and sorry three of these sets of polished black stone stairs back to back like so after that we're going to then place down a nerve break up sound stair can rough this um shulker box on the end here we're going to then take our item frames and just place it down on the sides here of the shulker boxes along with our green stained glass panes in those item frames 
And if you're on Java, we can go ahead and go one step further, which is placing a dark liquid button on the side of those shortcut boxes as well. Just note that um, if you are on a different version other than Java, you will not be able to place down an item frame and button in the same block space. So for for what I would recommend is to go ahead and place down an item frame in the green stingless pane and disregard the button if you're on a different version. With that out of the way though, we're going to go ahead and take our dark oak trap doors. We're going to do a row four across from the stair. So one, two, three, four. And then we're going to go then do one more row that goes forward. We then want to go and go to the back of the vehicle to this narrow brick stair here. We're going to place down a row of four of dark oak trap doors as well. We can then fill the inside in here with dark oak trap doors, which is going to basically create the base here for the vehicle. So again, we're just going to fill this in completely here on the bottom, like so. And that right there will create our bottom. Now we want to go and then take our tracks and we're going to do the same thing that we did over on the uh, right, left side over there, just over here to the right side. So I'm going to go and do this a little bit quicker as I've already explained the other side in pretty good detail. So we're just going to go ahead and kind of breeze through this, but it's the same exact thing on both sides. So just like that, we have our tracks set up. Now that right there is pretty much it for the main structure here for this layer. However, we do have one other feature we're going to be covering that's going to be doing these banners here, which will help kind of help basically shape our road wheels. I'm going to go and grab the necessary materials we'll need for that, and I'll see you guys here shortly to make it. So moving into making the banners, they're really simple to make. You're going to need two black banners, a loom, two green dye, and four black dye. We're going to start off by going ahead and going to our loom. We're going to take our black banners, place it in our loom along with our gray dye, or sorry, green dye. We're going to go and select the line that splits the banner in half. For our first banner, we're going to have the green on the left side, and our second banner, we're going to have the green on the right side. So you get basically these two banners that look like this. They're half black, half green. Then we're going to go and place down each banner back into the loom, along for a black die. And we're going to go and very simply do the horizontal line across the bottom here. And, or actually, my bad, it's actually going to be the line that goes through the center, like this. So this is going to be that center line like so, and we're going to do the same thing for this one. So it's just going to go for the center like that. So actually, you only need two black dye. My apologies on that. Um, but uh, yeah, you're just going to go ahead and make these two banners like so. And you're just going to place them down on the side here of the polished black stone stairs with the green facing toward each other. And what this will do is it'll help kind of create a nice accurate spacing there for our road wheels. Obviously, it's not perfect, but really it's kind of the best we can do here given uh, Minecraft and the way that things work but yeah you can see from the side there you can definitely tell the road wheels um and looks pretty nice so that right there will conclude what we have there for layer one and with that let's go ahead and move on to layer number two all right guys so moving into our next layer we have layer number two for layer two to go ahead and get started with we're gonna go ahead and place down a row of four of green terracotta that goes across followed by a green shortcut box upside down on its side we then want to place down an item frame then a green terracotta block on both sides same thing over here an item frame and a green terracotta block after that, we're going to go ahead and place down a dark liquid sign on the sides here of these blocks. Again, if you're on Java, that'll be a feature you can do. Um, because if you're on a version other than Java, same thing. You will not be able to place down a sign and item frame in the same block space. Same thing that goes with the buttons there. So just keep that in mind there. We're going to go ahead and place down an air break up sound stair, come off those two shortcut boxes, as well as a row three of green terracotta across the center there. Then a row three of green stained glass panes. And then we want to grab our dark liquid trap doors and place down a trap door coming off the front here of these stairs like that drooping down or angled down after that we're going to go and then take our narrow brick top slabs we're going to place down one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten top slabs back and over here same thing one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten back we then want to take our green terracotta and we can very simply just run a row of green terracotta on the side here of those slabs same thing over here and we're going to go ahead and also fill in the center here so the center here will just fill in completely with green terracotta. After that, we want to go ahead and place down a row of four green terracotta across. Green shortcut box to both sides. Item frame. Green terracotta block in the item frame. Or actually, my bad. Not a green terracotta block, rather. This is actually going to be a cobweb in the item frame. And the same thing will be done over here. Again, for us Java players, we'll place a dark cuckoo button on the side there of the shortcut box. Same thing over here. And then on the back, we're going to place down a nether brick upside down stair to both sides. And then we want to go and then grab ourselves some of these granite walls. We're going to place down a row of four of granite walls across, followed by a item frame on the ends there, and then a green terracotta block in the item frames, like so. And lastly, we're just going to go and take a dark cuckoo trap door. We're going to place it on the front here of the stair and close it like so on both sides. And after that, we're going to go and also go to the tracks here. 
we'll grab our item frames again. And we're going to place down an item frame. That'll be on the second to last slab here. We're going to go ahead and go forward one, two, and your third slab forward. Another item frame. Then we're going to go ahead and go forward again. One, two, three, and your fourth um, slab forward. Another item frame. And we're going to go ahead and place down green terracotta blocks in those item frames, as well as dark liquid signs. Like so. Uh, on the side there for us travel players. And the same thing will be done over here on this side. So just like this, gain our green terracotta, dark oak with signs, and that right there will complete them. Those right there, those little ro ro uh, sorry, roller wheels. Anyway, so uh, with that out of the way, that is going to conclude layer number two, and with that, let's move on to layer number three. All right, guys, moving into our next layer, we go ahead and move into layer number three. For layer three to start off with, we're going to take our dark oak with slabs, we're going to place down one, two, three, four, across those um, glass panes there in the front. We then want to place down a zombie head here at a slight angle, like this to both sides and actually we're going to go and do a little bit more harsher of an angle angle so it's gonna be about a 45 degree angle there to both sides we then want to take our pistons we're going to place down a row of three across here and we're going to leave them as is for right now now we're going to do the pistons if you're on java if you're not on java i would also recommend the end portal frames as you'll get the same effect of what we're trying to do here and you'll see that here shortly exactly what we have going on but yeah pistons will be pistons are the best here and portal frames will work or you can use dark oak wood stairs as well kind of up to you guys then we're just going to place down a dark oak wood sign on the side here of these pistons like so once that's done we're going to take our green terracotta we're going to go ahead and place down a row of one two three four five six green terracotta across and we're just going to go ahead and basically fill in the whole rest of the layer here with green terracotta so we're just going to keep going with rows of six all the way to the back of the vehicle And on the back here, right before we get to our very end, we're going to place down two green terracotta blocks on both sides. And in the middle here, we're going to place down two strip spruce wood blocks. So like so. We then want to go ahead and place our item frame on the side blocks, like so. We're going to go ahead and place down a red concrete block in the item frames, like that for our brake lights. And then a dark liquid sign on the side there, again, if you're on Java. We're also going to go ahead and place down two tripwire hooks coming off these two blocks like this on the rear. After we get that all done, that right there is going to conclude what we have there for layer number three for the build. Pretty simple layer, and with that we'll move on up to layer number four. Okay, right, guys, moving into our next layer, we have layer number four. For layer four to get started with here, we're going to go ahead and place down a dark oak defense gate on top of this green terracotta block. Open this toward the front, same thing over here. We then want to go ahead and place down an item frame that will be coming off these two fence gates, and we're going to go ahead and place down a snowball in the item frames like so. After that, we're going to go ahead and then take our debug stick, we're going to go ahead and basically, or actually... Let me explain that a little bit better. Um, at this point in time, we're going to go ahead and then use the debug stick. Now, this will be a feature that's going to be available for Java players. By typing this command right here, you have slash give at p minecraft colon debug underscore stick. This right here will give you this glowing stick. Now, you can go up to these pistons now and left click the, pi the pistons until you get selected extended. It should say false in parentheses. By right clicking each one of these pistons, now with the debug stick in your hand, it should say extended to true and it will get rid of that wood portion on the top there. What that helps us do is kind of achieve more of a nice gradual angle there for the arm, uh, front sloped armor and just kind of helps overall with the look of the build. As I mentioned earlier, end portal frames do have the same height as this modified piston, so you can use end portal frames, except you're going to have a tan color, which kind of stands out a little bit too much, I think, in my opinion. Um, or you could use dark oak stairs as an alternative. So, <clears throat> a couple options for you guys there, but again, the pistons here are going to be the best technique to use. <clears throat> at this point in time though, we're going to go ahead and then go to the middle here, we're going to place down two zombie heads and we want to go ahead and have these at slight angles, like this kind of opposite each other. So just kind of like that facing to the sides and then we're going to go ahead and grab ourselves some daylight detectors and we're going to place down two daylight detectors like so. After that, we want to go ahead and then place down one daylight detector going back on both sides. In these spaces right here, we're going to place down a zombie head. So it'll be like that. And then we want to place down a row of two of spruce wood slabs so one two then in this section right here we're gonna go ahead and grab ourselves some mossy cobblestone walls we're gonna place down two mossy cobblestone walls in the center here a spruce wood slab to both sides and then a dark oak wood slab to the very outsides like so we then want to place down a row of two of green terracotta across and our mossy cobblestone wall to the sides and our dark oak wood slab coming off said wall after that we're gonna take our green terracotta we're gonna place down a row of three or sorry row of four across a dark oak wood slab to both sides we want to go ahead and then place down two more rows of four, going back, and then taking our dark liquid stairs, we're going to go ahead and place down a row of two of stairs, one, two, and one, two, to the side as well. 
We then want to take our green terracotta. We're going to place down two blocks down the middle here. A mossy cobblestone wall to both sides. And then we're going to follow this up with a dark oak wood slab, which will be coming off the side here of these walls. So like that to both sides. We then want to place down a row of one, two, three, four, five, six slabs. And then a second row of six right behind it. We're going to go then place down two rows of two going down the center here with our slabs. And then grab our polished black stone. We're going to place down one, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four here in the corners. And after that's all complete there, that's going to basically wrap up what we have there for uh, layer number four for the build. And with that, we'll be going ahead and moving on to our next layer, layer number five. All right, guys, so moving into our next layer, we have layer number five. For layer five to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to place down two pistons here on top of these two green terracotta blocks. Again, you can use the end portal frames instead, or stairs can also work in this case. We're going to go ahead and take our dark oak wood slabs. We're going to go on the left side. So this left side piston, we're going to go ahead and go off of it with a row of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine slabs forward. On the eighth and ninth slab forward, we're gonna go ahead and grab ourselves some dark liquid signs and we're just gonna place them down here on the sides of those slabs, like so. And also underneath those, we wanna go ahead and grab some dark liquid trapdoors and we're gonna place down two trapdoors on the bottom there, like so. We're gonna go ahead and then go forward two more dark liquid slabs and then a polished blackstone slab for the very tip there for your main gun. We're also going to go ahead and grab ourselves a dark oak wood fence gate. We're going to place it down on top of this wall right here and have the fence gate open up toward the slab like so. After that, we're going to place down two green terracotta blocks here, a dark oak wood slab to both sides. We're going to go then place down there two green terracotta blocks in the center, followed by again a dark oak wood stair to both sides. After that, we're going to take our green terracotta, place down a row of four across. Then we're going to place down two musty cobblestone walls here in the center, and then a green shulker box on top of these walls like so. We then want to take our zombie heads, wrap two zombie heads around these shulker boxes here on the back and we're also going to go ahead and grab our zombie heads and place down one here on top of this stair and one here like so so you kind of create a little bit of a curved side there and same thing will be done over here just like that for the sides after that on the very back here we're going to just grab some fence gates and we're going to place down two fence gates coming off these two walls and we're going to have those fence gates opened up toward the walls like so and with that all done that is all we have there for this layer uh, we can also go ahead and take the time now to go ahead and take our debug stick and just right click those pistons to go ahead and set them in that um, altered state anyways though that right there is going to conclude what we have there for layer number uh, five of the build and with that we'll be going ahead and moving into our last final layers all right guys so moving into our last final layers here we have layer six for ten for these layers to go ahead and get started with we're going to go ahead and take our zombie head and we'll replace it down on top of this fence gate after that we're going to go ahead and also place it on a zombie head right here on top of this block and then behind this, we want to go ahead and place down one, two daylight detectors and another set of two like that after that. Once we have that done, we want to go ahead and then place down a zombie head on top of this stair here. And we're going to go ahead and then place down a spruce wood trap door here and close it like so. Same thing will be done over here, trap door, and we're going to close it like that. After that, we're going to place down a mossy cobblestone wall right here, followed by an item frame, a blank bed in the item frame, and a dark oak wood sign like that come out the side of that block. Uh, once we have that all done, uh, we want to go ahead and then place down a fence gate that will be on top of this wall here. And we're going to have this fence gate opened up toward the back. We're going to have an item frame coming off of it and then a snowball. And same thing can be done here. Now this item frame and the snowball here is only going to be available for Java players. If you're on Bedrock or Pocket Edition, you will not be able to place down the item frames and this zombie head here. And on the back here, we're going to be going ahead and placing down two wither skeleton schools on top of these two fence gates right here so you will not be able to place down those uh item frames in the same block space as those heads we are able to on java but not on pocket or not on pocket edition or bedrock so just keep that in mind uh when you go to add those you may have to disregard those item frames depending on your game version after that though we're going to go and then grab our dark oak fence gate and our iron bars we're going to place on a fence gate here on top of these two uh these two shortcut boxes and we're just going to go and go up with four iron bars from each of those fence posts and this right here will basically just make the radio antennas on the back here of the vehicle. So, just like that. And once you have that all complete there, uh, that right there is going to pretty much wrap up my design here for the uh, 2S25 Sprut SD 
uh, light tank. Hope you guys do enjoy this tutorial and are able to put good use if you do not use this build. I do ask that you guys give me proper credit for this being from a side of the build link to my channel or this video if this does bring you social media sites. As always, guys, give me proper credit for the build you're freezing for a project you guys are working on. Overall, enjoy the build, have fun with it, and all that fun stuff. Again, a big special thanks to Patreon supporter Derek Frost Westbrook for making this tutorial possible. And as always, feel free to check my Patreon page. Link is always in my video descriptions. With that, though, thank you guys again so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This has been Gary Twofer, and I'll see you guys next time.